Okay, welcome back. Video number two of the advanced course. Uh, I hope you're as excited as I am because what I'm about ready to show you in this video is what I've been talking about for a long time. And uh, at the very end of this video, or, or, or after I show you this entire uh, conditional acceptance, I'm going to break down and show you what actually sparked me to literally turn on my camera and start shooting the advanced course. And it came based off of this <laughs> and dude, I laughed so fucking hard. Holy shit. And I hope you do too. Cause this is getting to the point where it, it's almost unrealistic even for me. Um, anyways, <laughs> let's fucking do this, bro. You ready? All right. Her, she is. So, uh, real quick, I would like to just show you guys. Um, so if you go to my website, your favorite website in the whole fucking world, and you go to the contract killer course, I do put, so here's the sign up page here, and then you scroll down a little bit more, and then you have, here's the first post course video number one, just to get a little flavor for the course. Here is the very, very first conditional acceptance video I did ever, right? You guys know that one. That was before the course was even shot. And then we have the second one where I discharged my, all of my MX debt, okay? And then we have the letter here that was sent to me by the, uh, so Altran Financial, that's the, um, the collection company that works for um, MX. This is their, um, the attorneys that they use. Okay. Uh, so, so we have the first one you've already seen most likely that was around video number 16 on the course. Then we have this one, which is post course video number two, or if you've seen it on there. And then now this is the third correspondence or the second correspondence that I've had with, um, Amex. All right. So here we go. So we have the date up top. We have conditional acceptance. We have the usual. You guys remember all this good stuff. This is all the same. This is all the same. This is all the same. So this one here, I am writing this to. Um, so so I did them a favor on this one. The last one, you guys remember, I did just Stephen J. Squarey. Uh, the CEO on this one, I did the legal department as well, just to make sure that uh, they both have a chance to take a look at it. Right. And then I sent it to uh, the sheriff's office is the only one that I've added here that wasn't on the last one. So it's the United States Attorney General, California Attorney General, New York Attorney General, and then the sheriff's office uh, close to New York City. And you'll see why that's on there. Very exciting. Um change this to from from signature to autograph this word here uh, which is different right this is regarding the same the same uh, account numbers and stuff like that that you saw on the previous um, conditional acceptance right so we have the same thing this is the common law um do 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 now this is where things get a little different uh you guys seen my dictionary this is quite a bit before my dictionary was released uh i have uh this is big this is really really big you can actually you know now that i'm thinking about it you can actually use um my dictionary on any of your conditional acceptances if you want to or you can cherry pick various definitions uh, a definition section of any conditional acceptance is not just like definitions from things that you've found from other sources. It's also definitions that you manufacture. You can make up whatever definition you want. They fucking do it. So what's stopping you from doing it? You're the source of law. They are not the source of law. They are the source of statute or corporate bylaws. You are the source of law. So you have a higher standing in terms of these words and definitions than they could ever hope to achieve to the point where almost you can tell them almost anything of any definition of any word and they basically kind of have to accept it. So uh, here I am redefining person, human being, and individual. It's the same definition from my, um, my dictionary. And I say here, this is a full-blown novation, right? 
Now, the definition that I have here that I like, because I don't want to tie it down into anything physical that they can fuck with, right? Like the whole man, women thing, and now they've got 87 non-binary genders. That's that's their way of trying to combat all of that, right? So I, I, I made um, a human being, person, and individual are all defined as a nothingness which produces a somethingness, the seat of creativity. This is not the brain nor the body, but is a potential consciousness that has no space, no wavelength, no mass, and no location. This essence contains the decisions and definitions associated with interaction, identity, ethics, morals, and integrity. And the same definition applies to human being and individual, right? Uh and in all such writings shall be tremendously transparent as to when speaking about a trust person as the above organization, association, partnership, etc. Any vagueness of these terms will be met with additional leads. OK. And then from there, I started using all Black's Law definitions. Uh, just as a side note, uh, these are the same definitions you guys have seen on my previous uh, conditional acceptances. Uh, but just just as a side note, I will be. Um, putting in a lot more uh, of my own created definitions in the future on a lot of my conditional acceptance. I think it's very powerful. I think it's the most powerful thing you can do. You start, you start putting in your own definitions and sending out conditional acceptances. You're, <laughs> yeah, you're going to, you're going to shut people down and get exactly what you want real fucking fast. Let me tell you. Uh, I think I may have added these two for this one bond. I don't know if I put that in the previous ones and then blackmail, You'll see later on why I have this definition here. Very fun. Okay. Uh, foreign. That was an added one that I added later on, um, mainly because we have the word non-resident here at the very end of that definition, which I found very interesting. So here we go. Section B, personal information. Hello. I would like to spend some time here to just clarify who I am, what I am trying to do, why I am sending this, etc. When I say that there is no justiciable controversy, I'm not just saying that as a way to deflect some sort of hidden anger or upset. I do understand that the kinds of people sending in conditional acceptances like this one may be very stupid and most likely written from a place of deep hatred and rage. I honestly uh, am not in that category, and I only and I am only writing this conditional acceptance based off of a uh, misbalance that has occurred, of which I feel I need to correct as a legal, lawful professional. I'm going to try to write this conditional acceptance in a different style than the ones you may have seen before. I want to take the time to foster a relationship with American Express, a new relationship with excellent terms and conditions where we all win. In an effort to create this relationship, I would have to take the time to tell you a bit about what I have been doing and my, con uh, and my current conditions in life. Number one, I have changed my status via the passport application system to achieve a standard passport as per 22 CFR 51.3 section A. This is absolute proof to my current status as an internationally protected person protected under 18 USC 112. And as many of you know who have been following my recent content, uh, 18 USC 112 is the sexiest goddamn thing in the world to the point where even if you have like license plates, like I'm actually going to get special license plates made. I'll probably put it in this. Uh, we made some cool license plates before. Uh, I do have those. Um, uh, I'll probably show those later. They're really cool. I do like them a lot. They're in my, uh, my fan submission and art page, but I'm going to make some new ones. It's going to be, um, it's going to say official guest of the United States as per 18 USC 112. And then below that in huge letters, you're just going to say a uh, foreign diplomat. That's the most gangster shit ever. You have to have your passport sorted out in order to do that. Uh, I think that's even more dope personally than anything else I've made so far. I could make up something better or somebody else may, might make up something better, but just a little side note, we'll probably get into that more in the advanced course as we go. Uh, I'll probably actually make those before uh, we do a video on that kind of stuff, uh, MCOs and that kind of stuff. Anyway, side note, but uh, number two, I live my life entirely out of non-incorporated trust. So searching about my background, um, you will find I have no assets and possess almost no money. Okay. Uh, number three, I live, exist, and travel without the United States at all times as per 28 USC 1746 meaning outside of the District of Columbia. Um, and then number two, just so you guys know, number two is just so that they know, like, if they come after me or even try, there's literally no point. That's why I put number two in there, okay?
not that they would. You're trying to you're trying to create an actual thing here. You'll see what I'm trying to do. It's interesting. This is really advanced. <laughs> this conditional acceptance. Okay. Number four, I have trademarked my name in all capital letters, and I'm about to file for a change of name legally to legally change my name. I will inform you of that change as it occurs if our relationship can be mended by this conditional acceptance. I am also going to file a UCC1 common law lien on my SESQV trust. Uh, my interest is in total control of my trust as well as full responsibility over it. The use of my trademarked all caps trust name would be a lienable offense in itself. Please use Brandon Joe Williams beneficiary. Uh, with the hyphens and the colon, uh, when addressing me, I'm going to be the one who will approve all bond creation on my SESTQV trust. Number five, I have already gone to the DMV and fully voided my driver's license contract by signing it as the agent for the trust. I do not have a driver's license, but now just my trust does. Number six, and this is just to remind them that they're not going to pull me into their bullshit, okay, from any angle. They can search around. They're not going to find an angle they can pull me into their bullshit with, Okay. Number six, all my mail is done either through a P.O. box or marked as non-domestic without the United States. I have already, number seven, I have already canceled voter registration and have documented evidence to it being eliminated. Number eight, I have never had a marriage license, nor have I ever been in the military. Number nine, I do not live in state of California or state of California, but I live on the de jure unincorporated landmass known as California. I have already submitted documentation to this effect, so the only court... Uh, which I would be willing to involve myself with is an Article Three common law court. I will have nothing to do with incorporated commercial courts. Nancy Kramer would be the person to call and set that up, and I can give her your phone, her, give you her phone number if you need that. Just email me, and I'll send that over to you. She runs the California Assembly. Number 10, I have unfucked and unincorporated my life in every single area I could possibly find. I still work on it every single day, so I may find other things that I'll be doing after sending this conditional acceptance. Number 11, I am well aware of what the 14th Amendment did to my beloved country, and I have taken massive action to clean up my status and operation in every facet of life while taking the time to truly understand the glorious technology of law. Number 12, my intention and true purpose with my life is to help wake up the sleeping America of pre-1871. The America that has been in hibernation in our glorious country for a long time. I would like to assist American Express to help you be the most wealthy organization in the world, while at the same time getting help from Amex to achieve my goals. Number 13, I have been a user of Amex services for quite some time. Now, that, the specific answer to that is 2018, so about four years deep when this all went down, right? I have extensively researched the ins and outs of negotiable instruments, and I am well-versed in the activities of currency creation, as well as the situation behind unsecured lending in America. I have a plan, an idea, where you and I can combine forces to help you make more money than you ever even imagined, while at the same time helping to save the glorious land known as the Republic of the 50 States of America. Realize that I know the entire scene. Well, maybe not the entire thing, but more than almost anyone else, and I am digging every single day to find the truth. At this point, from what I can tell so far, you guys are simply the facilitators of the creation of money, and actually the living man is the creditor, and the SESTKV Trust is actually the debtor on all of your loans, which we've learned that's not quite the case now. They just take the negotiable instrument and can, can, uh, exchange it with the Federal Reserve. But anyways, uh, close enough. And when the public finds out, they're going to be fucking pissed. But I have a plan to help you with your big problem. You guys are in serious trouble. Number 14. America is hurting. She is a glorious land that has been subdued by stupidity and greed from all directions. Her people have forgotten the true importance of law, the importance of what it means to be the source of energy and the source of law. We are all equally responsible. I hate using that word for what this country has become and what it is becoming. Number 15, we are at a tipping point. A tremendous amount of people have woken up to the scan that is found in the 14th Amendment. They have woken up to the jurisdictional mess that has ensued. Millions of, of people are currently filing to transfer their status over from U.S. citizen to an internationally protected person. The new world is coming fast, and I have ideas on how American Express can 
uh, not only help usher in that new world, but become the financial premier of the new world. Number 16. I was introduced to the True America pre-1871 around September of 2021, and to be honest, I fell in love. America is a gorgeous sleeping women, woman, basically like the real-life Sleeping Beauty, who has been incapacitated by the unknowing greed and psychosis of the human psyche. The psychosis is not found in everyone, but is found in some people. That percentage of people is quite low, but due to fear, most good people tend to not stand up against of what, that of which they find bad. Number 17. Statutes such as 1 U.S.C. 8A, which makes uh, the word person, the word human being, and the word individual basically children, have destroyed and enslaved humanity. We are all considered children and retards until proved otherwise. But we live in a world where retards are manufactured on purpose. Horrible schooling, deliberate drug proliferation, proliferation, abundant sexual overstimulation, etc. It's a miracle that anyone uh, is able to live and survive in this world. All people are incredible for surviving at all in this world. We are also beautiful and amazing as creatures of life that survive despite all prevention to do so. Humanity, regardless of class, is so beautiful that it makes me want to burst into tears just thinking about it. This world is endlessly beautiful. And just taking the time to admire the fact of how people survive despite all odds that they should not is incredible. Number 18. I do comprehend that humanity as a generalized rule is not particularly intelligent. I do comprehend the difficulties of the human race. But I feel like part of that difficulty is also due to horrible available resources. Our schools are more interested in vapid subjects that do no good for real life, such as calculus, math, science, etc. We are taught subjects in school based off the threat of not passing, uh, but not of what will actually be useful for us in real life. What about how to handle women? What about how to handle men? What about love? What about money? What about how to fuck like a bull? <laughs> It's almost as if education itself has been made to only encompass that of which is so far detached from that of which is truly important in life. Number 19. People are upset. The world is in turmoil. Riots occur. There is confusion in every direction. Sometimes the world seems like a place that does not have a tremendous amount of time left before it wakes up and finds itself in a complete oblivion. Number 20. It seems as though that which is occurring in the world is insurmountable. How can one man or woman possibly fight back against the overwhelming forces that are occurring in the world today? Number 21. The truth is, we can. And the secret that is missing from all the world is found in the structure of trusts in law, the trustee beneficiary relationship. Number 22. If every single spiritual entity, which is person, as defined in the definition section, took the time to understand the importance of the trustee-beneficiary relationship and took the time to truly understand law, the entire world could be healed of its ailments. Number 23, spiritual entities are not difficult to train. The way in which the information is presented is no different than cooking. Law is truly the salvation of mankind. 24, the problem with law is simple. The way in which it is presented in a world consumed entirely with entertainment combined with a way of communicating law that is most useful for the spiritual entity processing it. Number 25. Yes, there have been crimes and felonies, but frankly, I don't care. This entire conditional acceptance is a request for a better world. I do not need your currency. I do not need material objects. I do not care about reputation. Beyond maybe having girls want to fuck me, but frankly, I'm already doing pretty good at that. What I care about is that America is hurting. America is in pain. We all have the ability to help her be reborn into the most glorious version of her that has ever been seen. Her golden age is completely possible with only a few key actions taking place. Number 26. I love people. Despite their idiosyncrasies and eccentric behavior, uh, these wild and strange behaviors 
are what makes life interesting. Everyone has the choice to determine their own life. Everyone is an image of what they want to be. They are a canvas and they are permitted to paint what they want upon that canvas. As long as people are not harming others, they should be permitted to do as they please, stupid as they, they might be. Oftentimes, this may be a source of entertainment for us. This is life. This is existence. This is incredibly beautiful to the point where I am almost in tears typing these words. Number 27. The future of our race is one that can be easily brought to a new level. It is not crazy or insane to view that a few key elements could be combined into the educational structure of America in order to create a new dawn of humanity that then creates a whole new dawn for planet Earth. Number 28. Education can, be, education can be streamlined to include the glorious importance of law, the importance and understanding of finances, and the beauty of interpersonal relations. These are all teachable concepts. It comes down to the way they are packaged and how entertainment and maybe humor is infused into the delivery. Number 29. I want to be entirely transparent. If this conditional acceptance is entirely ignored, I will file the liens of which I say I am going to file. I am not bluffing or trying to accomplish some contrived revenge that I may have on American Express. I am giving you an opportunity, an opportunity to stop creating fake ass loans using complex legal jargon and to actually do something worthwhile to help your fellow man and to put back together America to awaken our glorious country, glorious country back to her original splendor and beyond. We can do it. Honestly, it's not even all that terribly hard. You simply create educational material that is so useful and so fun and entertaining that people would rather watch that over some blockbuster like Stranger Things. I have already accomplished this, and I know exactly how to do it. And if we were able to come to an agreement in this conditional acceptance, we could join forces and change the world together. That's the first section of this conditional acceptance. As you can see, it's really intense and philosophical. And again, I'm a writer. Okay. But you're seeing here, you're seeing here how good we're getting at staying in honor. I mean, you don't read this and want to kill me or throw this in the trash. Okay, it's 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 engaging, it's interesting, it's emotional. It's 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 something people would want to read. Do you see that? I'm just showing you guys. This is huge. This is a huge 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 change over the last ones I've done. This is this is the real deal right here in my opinion, okay? Uh this one didn't come with a a, a Polaroid by the way. I was trying to get a little more stern with this one cuz they have been ignoring me. So this is uh upping the gradient a bit. Uh, didn't put a Polaroid on this one. Uh, Polaroids are good for initial contact. And then I'm, I'm starting to realize that I think as, as you start to get uh, a little bit more forceful or a little bit more hardcore, uh, you remove that element. That's what I'm doing here. That's what I did here. Okay. So here we have UCC 3-603, which you guys are already aware of. This is about how there's discharge if you pay and they, and they reject a negotiable instrument. And then we have something new. Okay, which you guys might not be too familiar with. We have 18 U.S.C. 891. Now, I've been looking for uh, HJR 192 and Public Law 73-10 in some sort of newer, more acceptable, more like right now format. Okay, uh, I feel like in 18 U.S.C. 891, I found that. Okay, and you can read it here. Uh, it literally says like the repayment, repayment and discharge are the same thing. They're defined as the same thing. Uh, it says here that, you know, the money is deferred, meaning like it's just an IOU and it's not going to get actually paid until later. Uh, the definition of to extend credit, uh, you know, which means um, to make any any loan, go into any agreement, uh, the definition of creditor, definition of debtor. Uh, as of just recently, I didn't know this back then. As of just recently, uh, the 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 uh, we are actually the creditors and they are actually the debtors, and they actually uh, just exchange our negotiable instruments, our applications for Federal Reserve notes, which I've gone into in in very very recent stuff, like in February, but it's not something that I've talked about 
any time in the course and stuff like that. So when I wrote this back in December, I wasn't too sure exactly how they did it. I thought that it was a little different, but um, they take the negotiable instruments. And I believe every single month, all of your statements are negotiable instruments and they, they just exchange those in for federal reserve notes every single month. Right. So I was a little bit off on this, but, but they know that, that, that I've got it right. So here we go. Section D uh, facts and events. I was a happy customer of American Express for over four years. I recently, in September of 2021, came into contact with the information that shows how our financial world really works. As far as I can tell from 18 USC 891, the living man or woman is the creditor and the SESTA KV Social Security Trust is the debtor. And you guys are essentially some kind of facilitator due to having a banking relationship with the Federal Reserve that allows you to trade or swap one negotiable instrument for another. So the first part I'm not so sure about anymore but the second part is really how they do it um that's being able to trade the negotiable instrument of the credit agreement uh for federal reserve notes which are negotiable instruments i study each and every day so i'll eventually figure out the whole thing front to back okay i decided i was going to pay with a different type of negotiable instrument rather than a fe rather than federal reserve notes as per ucc 3.603 you are unable to refuse those negotiable instruments i explained all this in the initial conditional acceptance I got my hands on some original IRS 1099A forms and converted them into negotiable instruments that were essentially checks. I wrote all three sections of one sheet of the single 1099A form as negotiable instruments and endorse, yes, endorsed with an I, the backs of each perforated sheet as per UCC 8-102A11. Conditional acceptance was made and sent to the CEO of Amex, uh, Stephen Squeery. Conditional acceptance was witnessed by the California Attorney General, New York Attorney General, as well as the United States Attorney General, Exhibit A. Conditional acceptance, complete with negotiable instruments, was signed by the CEO's agent named Thomas Severe on June 7th, 2022, at this particular time. And then I attached a copy of the little green card that has the signature on it. So that's called a 3811, which you guys already know about all that. Accounts were then paid in full via the acceptance of the three negotiable instruments, paying off uh, all the accounts. Negotiable instruments were never rejected. Accounts were also then discharged due to an unrebutted affidavit on uh, July 5th, 2022. That was, I think, 30 or 60 days after they had signed for the parcel. So either way you look at it, all the accounts were paid in full. Uh, number seven, additional request was sent to the payment processing section on 822.22 to see what the hell ever happened to my negotiable instruments because I was still getting phone calls from Amex. And one of the guys I spoke to wouldn't even help me get in contact with Thomas Severe. So real quick, the guys kept calling me. So I got on the phone with them and I'm like, yo, uh, Thomas Severe signed for my parcel. Like I have evidence. I'll show you. And I kept telling him like, yo, get me on the phone with Thomas Severe. Get me on the phone with uh, Thomas Severe. Get me on the phone with Thomas Severe. And eventually he like gave up and like hung up on me and they never called me anymore. Uh, that's kind of how I handled that. Just for all of you that are asking about phone calls and stuff like that. Uh, yo, I really, I was like, dude, I really need your help, man. I'm so glad you called me. Can you, you know, I told him the whole thing and I, I told him that I'd sent them some checks and he was like, Oh, are you able to see that the checks were cash? And I said, no, no, I'm the beneficiary on the account. I don't have access to any of the accounts. So I wouldn't know. Uh, uh, he's like, can you get a hold of the trustee? I was like, no, I was like, the trustee isn't someone I can get a hold of, blah, blah. And then I just said, hey, can you can you please, please, please help me get in hold with Thomas Severe? And he was like, oh, I don't have a way to call internally. And I was like, oh, come on, man. Like, I really need help. Like, uh, this would be so awesome. I'll be able to get this all cleaned out, blah, blah, blah. And I just kept pushing on him, kept pushing on him. Eventually, he just he just gave up and hung up. He tried to get me to pay. Come on, I need you to pay. I need you to pay. Like, nah, dude. I already paid in full. What are you talking about? So then they stopped calling me. Uh, so number eight. In response to the additional request that I had sent in as a letter from another agent of the CEO named Paul Sykes, which is Exhibit D, which is just some form letter. I'm not going to get into all this because you, you can just it's just a stupid form letter. I, I don't have it ready here. I wasn't thinking I was going to show all this. But basically, it was just like, hey, like we didn't do anything illegal. And as per the agreements that we had originally done, this is all legit. And he was he literally said, I'm writing in response uh, to from the CEO himself, basically. Right. Number nine, accounts are then falsely sent to collections via the a company named Altran, which is Exhibit E. That was uh, some stuff from Altran that I had gotten. New letter with a claim of lien sent to Altran. Uh, that was just a letter. That wasn't even a conditional acceptance. It was just a letter stating that basically that that you guys have been kind of duped a little bit, I think, on this. Uh, 
these were actually all already discharged and I already sent them. I actually sent Ultran copies of the 3811. I sent them copies of the, the, these various things from the earlier points here. And I said, Hey, if you guys bought this debt, you guys got fucked over. And, and I'm going to assume you had no idea about any of that. And I'm going to assume that you guys just, just bought this and you guys weren't told what the deal was with the debt. And, and I'm going to give you guys a chance to clean this up because you guys might have gotten fucked just as much as I have gotten fucked on this deal. And I said, uh, I said I'm going to give you guys like uh, 30 days to clean all this up because I understand it's going to take you a little bit of time because maybe you bought this and, and you need to go get a refund from Amex because if you bought this debt, this debt ain't even legit, bro. Like You need to go back and get your money back. You just got fucked by Amex. Uh, and then I said, yo, just to be clear, and I, it was, it wasn't even a conditional acceptance. It was like just a normal, like letter. It was like a super low level, right? Really gentle communication. It wasn't anywhere near like this. And I basically said, um, you know, if you guys don't do this and you guys keep jerking me around and you guys keep fucking around and doing shit, uh, and you keep fucking sending me shit and you keep doing shit, I'm going to lean you for like $12 million. And I broke down every single thing that I'm going to lean him for. I said, but, but it shouldn't get to that. I'm just letting you know, like, don't, don't, don't dawdle on this. Just get it done. Get the fucking accounts cleaned up, give it back to MX or get a refund on the account and delete me from your system. Right. And then after I sent them that, uh, all tran, law firm deciding to no longer collect the debt and also not reporting the debt. And that's actually from this right here. That's this letter right here. So I just, just kind of summed it all up for you in a nutshell. Um, I don't really think I want to get into all the various letters. I mean, uh, I suppose I can show you guys a little bit. Um, Maybe it would be helpful. I'm not sure if I ever showed you guys on the last one what all went down with this. Uh, give me one second. I'll, I'll go ahead and show, just make sure. I didn't think of this. Um, so, yeah, we have... Uh, Hmm. Here's the letter I sent to Altran. Here is the. You know, maybe I will show you guys some of this stuff, just because we're we're this far into it. Might as well fucking turn this into a real party, huh? I'll show you guys. Just I'll just go over it kind of rapidly. I'm not gonna fuck around with this forever. So you already saw the final. Um, so here I'll show you guys this one first. Um, this is the uh, letter from Paul Sykes. Um, after I had written the second time. Thank you for your correspondence to Steve Squarey. After review, he has asked me to respond on his behalf, and I welcome the opportunity to address your concerns. Our banking procedures regarding unsecured lines of credit have been designed to accommodate all our customers and protect our business. Please be assured that American Express com uh, complies with all regulatory agencies governing our business. The card member agreement states that using the card serves as an acceptance of the full terms of the card member agreement. You are bound by the card member agreement and must make all payments uh, on time. If you do not make payments on time in accordance with the card member agreement, we reserve the right to report the account as delinquent on all credit reporting agencies. We hope this has been helpful. Paul Sykes, executive assistant. So that's that one. Um, show you. Let's see. Oh, this is pretty funny, actually. You're going to like this. This is the one that I sent. So it's kind of a weird sequence, but this is the one I sent before that that sparked that letter from Paul Sykes. Um, <laughs> this is so fucked. So I sent that. This is the one when I'm talking about um, when I'm talking about uh, 
uh, additional request was sent to the payment processing section on 822.22 to see what the hell ever happened with my negotiable instruments. This one's going to make you guys laugh. So, hello there, my dear friend. I hope you're having a good day. If you're not, I've enclosed a Polaroid of myself in a pickle costume that I made especially for you. No joke. I walked downstairs and found a couple of hot girls, and it was really awkward, but I said, I know this sounds strange, but I need three Polaroids of me in a pickle costume to send to a friend. I wasn't sure how to do the Polaroid, so I sent uh, three. Uh, I wasn't sure how to do a Polaroid, so I took three. This must have been one of the first times I did a Polaroid, actually. Uh, the one I'm sending to you is the one that came out best. Forgive me, this is my first time creating Polaroids. I hope you love it. Keep it on your desk to have a smile on your face when times get tough. I'll be there for you. I have a problem that I am hoping you would be so kind as to assist. I sent three checks to pay my account in full, and they were signed by Thomas Sevier. I have enclosed the original conditional acceptance that I sent in, as well as a copy of the original 3811 form with Thomas' signature on it, showing that he did receive the parcel. I have also enclosed all my previous statements as I would like the account to be retrogressed, not sure what word to use, to when I sent in those three checks and any additional fees or interest um, that was added after that date to be taken off my account so that my accounts can be paid in full and so that I can begin to use my cards again. Could you assist me in finding the checks that I sent in that Thomas signed for and help me get my account paid for by the checks? The checks are from a trust account and the trustee to that account is not available so I have no way to know if the checks have been cashed but I am getting many calls. I do not know why my account has not been marked as fully paid. I would like to start using my cards again. Please also mark my accounts as do not call and uh, also until all this can be sorted out. Those checks were for both my Amex cards and my cabbage loans. Thank you so much. I know it must be boring and stressful with a job just taking and handling payments all day long. I hope my Polaroid makes you the most popular person in your area. Uh, and you and your coworkers get a good laugh from it. And for the love of God, I hope you're female. If you're a dude, then hell, maybe you can use it to pick up that cute girl you've had your eye on in the office. They say don't fuck your coworkers, but I don't know. You have the power of pickle man on your side, so I'm, uh, I can be your wingman on this one if you really want to go for it. Much, uh, you rock, much love, P- platonic if you're a dude, gross, name certified male. So that's what I sent to um, the uh, payment processing area, okay? And then, uh, let's see here. This is, so going back to this, um, and then we have, uh, so when Altran, the, the, um, collections company sent me a letter and they started sending me bills and shit like that. This was, um, let me see here. Uh, this was my response to that. Let me just pull this up. There we go. Um, Certified mail to Altran uh, regarding attempt to recontract on a discharge loan. Here's the account number. To whom it may concern. I have enclosed some statements from Amex as well as a letter from Altran as regards to a fully discharged debt that was discharged by the acceptance and non-denial of three negotiable instruments as well as a failure to rebut an affidavit conditional acceptance. I have enclosed a copy of the conditional acceptance as well as the proof that the parcel containing this conditional acceptance was indeed accepted by Thomas Sevier, who is an agent of CEO Stephen Squarey. I have also enclosed a copy of a letter that I received from Paul Sykes, agent of Stephen J. Squarey, which shows that the conditional acceptance was indeed accepted. As you may not have been told all this information from Amex, I will give you the benefit of the doubt as to your acquisition of this debt, which is discharged, may have been under false pretenses. If you indeed purchase this debt or the negotiable instrument from Amex, I would recommend that you request a refund as this de- debt was falsely sold to you. I am also willing to give you uh, 30 days from the acceptance of this parcel uh, regarding this letter to update my records and eliminate this debt from your system. If after 30 days of receipt, I get more communication regarding this debt or I find out that you reported this debt to any credit reporting agency, or if I find out that you pitch, sold, transferred this debt to another collection agency or anything similar, then I will be leaning Altran Financial LP for the following infractions. And this is actually kind of a sloppy list. This is actually before I really, really heavily studied uh, Title 18. So you can, I'm not going to go through all these, but um, 
it's a bit sloppy in my opinion. Uh, way, way better later. You'll see in the one we're, we're going through now. Uh, total lien cost of all the above violations is a little bit over $3 million. If the lien is filed and the lien is not satisfied within 30 days of you receiving the parcel with the uh, lien documentation inside of it, I will be contract, con- uh, contracting with the U.S. Treasury in order to get this debt collected via them. Enforcement of this lien will be aggressive. Again, I want to give you plenty of time to eliminate and correct the status of my account with you guys and get your refund back from Amex on any expenditure you have made as regards to this previously fully discharged debt. If you knew about the above information and are simply trying to recontract with me, then now let's take the time to very clearly state that this request has been denied. Thank you for your time and reading and handling this matter. Sincerely blank. Now this one is a little bit stern uh, so I did not do a Polaroid on this one, as you can see, right? Okay, that's that one. Uh, make sure we're here. So I think that pretty much covers everything. I know it's a bit goofy, different angles and different timelines and stuff, but whatever. I wasn't expecting to show you that, so there you go. So now here we are after all that goofiness and silly fun. Number 12, Amex then erroneously reported two accounts that had been previously discharged by both of the acceptance of my negotiable instruments as well as failing to rebuff my affidavit. Now, I was never going to get angry with Amex. I thought they were just going to forget this whole thing and wipe it away. It's when they reported my debt to the credit agencies is when I got kind of irritated. And I, and I, and that's when this whole conditional acceptance thing got born, right? So section E conditions for acceptance. This is where things get a little hot and heavy. Okay. There will be two options to this conditional acceptance. I am conditionally accepting many different aspects, such as the ignoring of standard negotiable instruments, the closing of my accounts despite having never broken any laws, not accepting my payments and pretending my payments were not received, reporting my fully paid accounts to credit bureaus as unpaid, being given loans for years under false pretenses and felony fraud, etc., Everything I am talking about in this conditional acceptance is conditionally accepted. As long as the lien amounts are fully paid to me, I will consider all charges cured and discharged. I am not under the UCC or the USC, and I am a foreign government, so I do not have to accept any random negotiable instrument like you do. Although I would like to offer silver and or gold as another option to pay the liens, if that is a better choice for you than Federal Reserve notes, this is technically an international correspondence. I want to give you the full rundown of both options, and I will cover all the individual charges in the claim of lien section and give you lots of detail there to break down each part. Option A. This entire conditional acceptance is ignored. In that case, I will file all the liens in the section F, claim of lien section. I will also be sending a copy of the lien to the sheriff in your local area and creating a situation where I will give a grace period. After the grace period, located in Section D, then I will begin the action of seizing assets and or contracting with the U.S. Treasury in order to get these liens collected upon in an effort to cure the charge. I am creating an account with you guys either way you look at it. If I do end up seizing assets in person, I will be broadcasting the entire activity live on social media, YouTube, and possibly other places. I will also be showing all documents live that I can show legally without breaking any laws. I will also break down each individual step in painstaking detail as to how I was able to work my way up to be able to seize those assets. I'm explaining all this in detail because I want you to fully understand that by ignoring me, there have been imbalances. To continue to do so will create massive imbalances in law that I have no choice but to balance using the processes of law. My only interest is in the correction of the imbalance. This particular imbalance goes way beyond just me, as you already know. You guys have been doing the same thing to people for a long time. Well, now maybe it's interesting to be on the receiving end. This conditional acceptance is obviously quite a bit more intense and aggressive than the last one I sent you because you have been ignoring me or sending me pathetic form letters from the CEO's agent. So if you would like to continue to do so, then option A will be legally and lawfully selected by you in response to this conditional acceptance. Acquiescence is a choice. 
Option A is basically where you understand that my search may go beyond just the liens that will be filed. It may include possible lawsuits in order to get into discovery. That includes possible FOIA requests on federal organizations that are involved in banking, etc. Whatever it takes to sort this whole thing out and figure it out and publish the truth of the situation is exactly what I'll do. Option B. In option B, we can reopen my accounts and I can pay you multiple times in order to satisfy the monthly expenses. I'll be using negotiable instruments that we both can come to an agreement on. We can use 1099A forms submitted online, forms of art appraised by myself for value, I'm an art appraiser, or any other preferred negotiable instruments that satisfy UCC 3-603 as well as something you can convert on your end. I will be placing a PIN number on my SESTA KV account uh, soon using a 15227 form. That's a IRS PIN, right? I would also give you that PIN number to continue access to access my account. Frankly, I could care less about that account because I am currently in the process of opening an entirely new account with the Treasury uh, as we speak with way more money in it than that account has. I will be open for any offer you may have, maybe a triple pay. I am available for offers. I wouldn't mind paying you even more than I was previously paying. As per 18 U.S.C. 891, a discharge is, by definition, a payment. Thus, we have a situation where I could be given an Amex Black Card, which has no limit, and that card could be paid each month using multiple negotiable instruments as well as access to my SESTA KV Social Security account. I plan on becoming a private bank and contracting with the Fed myself at some point in the near future, but until I can do all that, we can work together. And maybe you can even help me with that. If you guys would like to help me with that, we can also come up with an exchange for that help. Now, what you might be thinking at this point in the conditional acceptance that I'm is that I'm trying to blackmail you, which is why I put the definition of blackmail in the definition section of this conditional acceptance. But here's the real truth of the matter. If you guys choose option B and we can restore our trustee beneficiary relationship, I would be willing to vastly sweeten the deal for you. If I am able to have a car with a limited or very high limit, millions monthly, that can be paid using negotiable instruments that are not Federal Reserve notes, I would be willing to offer my expertise in order to help you become the premier creditor of the new world entirely free of charge. What does that mean? That means that I would be willing to help you put together the best way to receive negotiable instruments, the best marketing to introduce your services to the new world, PR programs, etc. millions of dollars in services entirely free of charge. The new world is coming. You guys have been getting more and more coupon payments and negotiable instrument payments, and you are ignoring those payments. That's breaking statutes very heavily. It's only going to last so much longer before it implodes in your face and it will be ugly. But I can help you get ahead of this crashing wave and to turn this entire situation from a situation of being a problem and convert it to a situation that works entirely in your favor. I promise you that with my position in the marketplace combined with my skill in PR and marketing, I can help you avoid the eventual and possibly very soon demise of your entire enterprise. I completely understand that you probably think that the operations of discharge technically being a repayment could mean the dis demise of commerce entirely. And well, frankly, I completely get that. I honestly can't even say that I disagree with you, to be wildly honest. But th basically what, what this is all about is, is if, if no one has to work in order to get paid, then no one will work anymore and everything will just collapse. That's what we're talking about here. But that doesn't change the fact that the law is the law. The law has never asked for your emotional concerns to be a part of the equation. If you are so concerned about commerce in America, you need to have the law changed and not make emotional decisions that go against the law based on an imagined oblivion, even if it's true. HDR 192 has technically been repealed and so has public law 73-10. We both know that. Many, most people submitting negotiable instruments or coupons don't know that, but you and I both know that the United States Code has the same exact information that was located in HDR 192 in Public Law 73-10. You just got to find it. We are in a bankruptcy proceeding and all debt is simply dischargeable due to there being no money by definition to actually pay anything. 18 U.S.C. 891 is an example of a spot in the U.S.C. that shows H.J.R. 192, Public Law 73-10, in glorious black and white. Everything is deferred. So, no, I'm not trying to blackmail you. I'm trying to help you service me while getting paid the same as you were from me before or even more 
while also getting free services from me worth millions of dollars. All I'm asking is you simply conform to the laws of which you operate under. Nothing more, nothing less. I have worked very hard to get the fuck away from all of these horseshit laws like the UCC. So I don't have to deal with this trash. But you guys want to be involved, tied into it all, so whatever. It's a voluntary system, so I guess it's your choice. In fact, if you guys are also concerned with this new world, creating a situation where we have a silver, gold, coin-based financial system, again, I'd be willing to help in a situation, that situation as well, but we would have to work out another system of payment on my end because negotiable instruments, promissory notes, won't fly in a system like that. If you are interested in this, I want to set up an in-person meeting with executives of American Express. No interns, no bullshit. If you guys want to talk business, let's do it. If not, then you guys can choose option A below. Either way is totally fine with me. Frank, frankly, option A might be more exciting. And I put a little sunglasses, smiley face guy here. That's pretty fun. Section F, claim of lien. Here's the claim of lien part. This is the part that you guys have been wanting to see that I haven't posted anywhere. And this is it, okay? Due to the fact that this fraud being performed on me for over four years... I will be kind and not charge you with more than one felony of each individual crime below. I could charge multiple counts of many of these based off of each month there being a negotiable instruments creator stolen from me without knowing it. Basically, each statement after each month being a negotiable instrument and it being stolen. If none of the above conditions are completed, then a commercial lien will be filed for all of the following penalty, uh, felonies. Once the lien is completed, it will be sent to you and given an additional 60 days to mature. If no cure is completed or common law article three jury trial held. I will be contracting with the U.S. Treasury to get these liens collected upon and will also be filing criminal charges of all of the below, or I may contact various sheriffs in an effort to cure the lien by seizing assets. Okay. I will be further describing each individual crime in an effort to help you gain a, f uh, a further insight into why each individual crime has been committed. Again, I'm only interested in achieving the balance that law insists on, not something that would be considered unfair. There is no justiciable controversy on my end, even for this section. I want to give you every opportunity to help me repair the trustee beneficiary relationship that we have. Like I said before, I'm willing to give you multiple payments for each statement while also giving you millions of dollars in free services to usher in the new world. I am offering you the throne in the new de jour world that is coming fast. General crimes that were violated. Now, this part all came from, this is right. So when I studied uh, Title 18, and I put all of Title 18 on my website, like I showed you in the introduction. Uh, it, I, the reason why I went through Title 18 was to build this conditional acceptance. So we have harassment. You guys ignored my communication and sent me very weak and dismissive letters, the one from Paul Sykes, uh, while also reporting my discharge debt to the three bureaus. Uh, breach of rights under color of law, conspiracy. You guys know that a payment is a discharge, yet you continue to push some strange political narrative while ignoring the law. The law does not appreciate being ignored. Same thing, uh, telemarketing and uh, email marketing fraud. You guys mailed me several statements that not only uh, did not offer me to pay with negotiable instruments, but you kept sending me mail that my account was unpaid when it was paid in full via the acceptance of negotiable instruments. Uh, this is all from my website. Uh, there's some notes here that they need to have in order to understand uh, the various crimes, the various felonies. Um, I am an internationally protected person, as I explained in Section A. You guys have threatened to report debt that I literally sent in negotiable instruments to pay. I sat down and took the time to understand the system and care enough about your financial well-being that I made sure I built out each negotiable instrument perfectly so you guys could redeem it. But you decided you were going to ignore the statutes of which you are bound to. Here's harming or kidnapping. Uh, this is harming, I think, uh, an internationally protected person. You guys have endangered my liberty by uh, reporting my already discharged and paid in full debt that could prevent me from getting other loans, places to live, etc. Lying, fraud, etc. involving any instrument, promissory note, etc. Right? And then I even put a little note here because, again... Trying to be nice, make sure everybody gets it. We have the definition above of a particular section and what it is, and I, I piece it all together for them. That way I'm not just being a dick, okay? My negotiable instruments were stolen and not applied to my account. This needs to be cured in law. Uh, the amount I'm charging for this is $700,000 for the fraudulent transactions with regard to my negotiable instruments, okay? Um, 
taking or attempting to take anything via force, violence, or intimidation, right? You guys are intimidating me in an effort to extract Federal Reserve notes out of me, but you guys know that you cannot only accept one type of negotiable instrument and reject another type of negotiable instrument. This is so wildly and obviously illegal that why you would even try and behave this way is a bit sad, just to be honest. International terrorism. I am a foreign government official. Due to you trying to intimidate me, you are trying to intimidate a foreign diplomat. You are also doing this to other people as well by pretending that, quote, if you don't send me one particular type of negotiable instrument, which is a Federal Reserve note, then we will ruin your ability to get other loans or, or have a place to live, end quote. This is international terrorism by definition. If you try to combat this particular point, I will turn this entire situation into a class action lean and we'll find 10 other people you are doing this with and we'll assist them to put together a similar conditional acceptance in order to prove this point. Male related crimes that were violated. Male threats intent to extort money. Uh, the statements after I sent in my negotiable instruments and first conditional acceptance were all illegal as the debts were already fully discharged. Interstate mail threats. Since I am an internationally protected person, uh, all statements sent after my payments were accepted via registered mail by Agent Thomas Severe were interstate mail threats. I am located without the United States as per 28 U.S.C. 1746 because the United States is located in the District of Columbia as per UCC 9-307H. Uh, and then I also put the other one, uh, 28 U.S.C. 3215A also describes the United States as a federal corporation. Okay. Mail fraud, including securities, uh, same as above. Here's finance related. Got some notes here. Receiving money from successful extortion. Uh, I gave you the negotiable instruments from a debt that you only facilitated, but under false terms and conditions that um, implied that you were the creditor and I was the debtor. Plus, you probably dipped into my SESTA KV account and possibly other ways that you got the money. If I keep digging, you know what I'll find. The extortion part is the threat of reporting than actual reporting of the discharge debt. Lending, credit, and insurance institutions embezzles, extract, purloins, or willfully misapplies any money, securities, or anything of value, which is the which is the negotiable instruments. You guys took my negotiable instrument, my original negotiable instrument when I signed up for Amex. I'm assuming that you guys just have some sort of power of attorney or something over my trust name, Brendan Joe Williams, and you would simply turn each month's statement into a negotiable instrument. There was a failure of consideration. As far as I can tell, I was the creditor and my SESTA KV trust was the debtor. How many negotiable instruments have you stolen from me? I don't know, but I can prove you stole at least one, my application. Uh, stealing money or instruments. You guys stole all my negotiable instruments from each month I owed you and my initial application. I'm only going to charge 700 grand for this. Um, knowingly receiving stolen property, same as above. Fraudulently getting money from the transfer of instruments and securities, same as above. Transporting goods, money, or securities that were acquired under false or fraudulent pretenses, same as above. Ten years in prison for that one. I mean, a lot of these are many years in prison. You can check uh, slavery, indentured servitude, uh, forced labor. Here we go, peonage. We're going to get into that, which is called debt slavery. You guys ignored my original conditional acceptance and sent my fully paid and discharged accounts to all three credit bureaus in order to place me in some sort of credit slavery. If the credit bureaus uh, don't remove my reports regarding these accounts, they're going to be hit with all these charges as well. Okay. So the total lien cost on all this added up is $6,150,000 per account. Since two accounts total were reported, then we are at $12,300,000. Any additional accounts reported will be separate liens to add all these same accounts. Uh, total prison time is up to 179 years in prison total if the maximum of all felonies are sentenced in a, in a criminal case. Section F, limitations of time. From the point of signature of, the res of this receipt of this conditional acceptance, as per the postal code listed above, I will give you 60 days from receipt to fully address each of the above points, point by point. Otherwise, this matter will be considered settled, and option A above will have been chosen by default by American Express. I'm giving 60 days specifically as a way of creating honor and giving you plenty of time to determine uh, what you would like to do in this situation. 
If additional time is needed, uh, please do not hesitate to request additional time via email to myself. My approval will need to be in writing to be considered an official extension of time, either via email or via letter. A vouchment without prejudice, all rights reserved, pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1746, executed without the United States, and declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States of America, that the following foregoing is true and correct, executed on blank, autograph of the non-incorporated living man, and then my name as a beneficiary, and this, this page here was notarized. Okay? So this is the full breakdown of the big boy the one that you guys have been hearing about for quite some time and I haven't uh, published yet. I'll probably put this one on my sign-up page because I put the other, the other two um, conditional acceptances are on my sign-up page. So I'll probably put that, this one on there too. Um, I'm probably not going to make any of these uh, advanced course videos downloadable. Um, but I think, this one in particular, there's a lot of advanced people that are hunting around and looking for looking for stuff. I'll probably make this one public and put it on, on the actual sign-up page. That way people can get an idea of, of a little taste of what they're going to be getting in the advanced course. Uh, but besides that, the advanced course is going to be only for people who have completed all of the uh, Contract Killer course videos. And then at the very end, they'll be invited to sign up for a different list. And that different list is going to be the advanced course. Now... With that said, I'm going to show you guys, and this is fucking hilarious, I'm going to show you guys um, exactly what it was involving all of this that got me to want to um, start shooting all this video, right? Uh, it's totally fucking insane. Uh, so so basically... Uh, we're still on the in progress of doing all this. I, 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 so, so what, what Amex did is they sent me like a couple things saying, Hey, we, we've kicked this up to an upper level of our legal department. We're working on this. Another thing they did is they sent me a statement of every single statement that I've ever had. It was like two big packages like this and like this. And it said, here are all your statements that you requested. And I never requested any statements. Right now I didn't put all the specifics and I didn't hit them with multiple counts of negotiable instrument stealing because I didn't have all this, all the statements and I, I didn't, I don't think my, my online account even worked anymore. So now I'm at a point where they're still working on all this and they've sent me some stuff and they've created a dispute ticket and they've sent me all these statements and now what I'm thinking I want to do is I want to change it up. I'm going to give them an additional 60 days and I'm going to hit them for uh, one count for every single one of those statements. Or uh, now that I know so much more about all this stuff, maybe I'll, I'll offer them an option B again. But I'm thinking about changing the terms on this before actually filing the liens. Because if I hit them with individual infractions for each individual negotiable instrument it's going to be way more than 12 million dollars brother <laughs> way more i haven't decided yet what i'm going to do exactly i guess it depends on on what they send me um they have like another week so i'll probably wait for another week and see what they send me um but with that said check this shit out bro <laughs> this is fucking crazy bro so, so, so here's my credit. Okay. This is my credit score. So right here is when we decided to, to, to discharge the debt on the, on the American express. Right. So, so the American express debt got, got reported down through here. Okay. Now, as you can see, um, from the date on my, on this now, for people who don't who don't know, we had an incredibly cold winter. I mean, there was like planes shutting down and all sorts of fucking craziness. So I don't think they signed for this parcel until like maybe January, early January. It took like three weeks to get there because it was it was going from Los Angeles all the way to New York City, right? And it was registered mail. So it was pretty slow, right? This is the craziest fucking shit I have ever seen, bro. So so this is 
I don't even understand. It doesn't even, it, it just jumps. It doesn't even have like dates for some reason, which is super weird. Because over here we have all these little one week, one week, one week, one week. There's a jump here, I guess. One big jump down, one week. But I, I, dude, I'm telling you, like when I was actually paying my credit card month after month, I was at 750. Now, through a fucking discharge letter, a conditional acceptance, which isn't even completed yet, look at where I'm at. Now, I wrote to, um, I wrote to, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to give you guys a little bonus here. I actually wrote to the credit bureaus as well. Um, I'll go ahead and show that to you guys as well. Uh, this is bef uh, after all of this went down. I wrote to the credit bureau, all three credit bureaus, to try to get that shit taken off of my credit. One of the bureaus was like immediately yes, and then the other two sent me a bunch of weird shit that I never bothered to totally try to figure out because I just kind of went on to other things. So um, I'm actually going to show you guys this as well. So, um, so So a lot of those same letters and the old conditional acceptance and the 3811 form that was signed by Thomas Severe, uh, I sent them all that, all the copies of all that same shit. And here is a letter that I wrote. And this was effective, okay? I don't know how effective. Uh, this was just going to be my starting point, basically. And then I was going to write more intense letters from this point forward. Uh, so I said to Equifax... This is, I think Equifax is the one that immediately approved everything and took down these, uh, these bad hits on my credit. Regarding dispute of American Express closed accounts ending in 0663 and 3633. Hello, I've enclosed a goofy Polaroid because anytime I send in a request, um, I always send in a fun Polaroid as a way of saying thank you for the annoyance of having to deal with my paperwork. Hope you love it. I hope it brings some enjoyment to your day. Uh, I'm issuing an official dispute as regards to the above two accounts as these accounts were discharged already. Facts and timeline. Uh, conditional acceptance is made by, was made and sent to the CEO of Amex. It's all the same shit from the last document you just saw. It's the same exact timeline. Okay. Please remove the account ending in 0663 and 3633 closed accounts on my credit report as well as any American Express accounts and any negative remarks uh, as regards to anything from American Express. I am currently sending another conditional acceptance to MX, which is the one we just went over, to have those two reports removed. Otherwise, there will be commercial liens uh, amounting to over $3 million USC, USD per account that is not removed from my credit report. Please temporarily remove all Amex accounts off of my account. Um, until this can be sorted out, if you would like an update on these accounts, then you can contact Amex or myself regarding this, inf this situation. Thank you for your help in this matter. I'm going to give them a chance to pull these reports down before I file the liens, probably 30 days. But in the meantime, I would like to have these reports taken down. Thank you so much for all your help. You can email me directly at my email or send me a hard mail at the top, uh, the address listed at the top of this document if you need any additional information or have any additional questions. When you take down these Philly paid accounts, please let me know via email or uh, via mail or email so I can stay on top of the situation. So as you can see, it's it's not really a conditional acceptance and it's not very harsh. It's very, very gentle. Um, I just assume that they received some bad information and they just they're just they're just basically victims in all of this or innocent bystanders in all of this. And I that's usually how I go in for the first hit, you know. Um so I think that pretty much covers it. I wanted to show you guys that uh, in detail. That's my Amex conditional acceptance. We are still moving forward on that. Um, but as you can see, every time I make a, a new um, a new reach and every single time I make a new document or whatever, I um, always make sure that... Um, 
I enclose all of the previous documentation and the timeline and everything so that they can be up to speed on, on what's happening and they get copies of everything. And, um, yeah. So there you go. I wanted to share that with you guys. I know you guys have been wanting that for a long time. So, uh, there you go. That's going to be it for video number two on the advanced course. And I'll see you guys at video number three. <laughs> bye bye. Say bye bye. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself. <laughs>